Thanksgiving is by far the most delicious holiday, but pulling off a successful Thanksgiving dinner with all the fixings does take some planning ahead. So today I've teamed up with Frigidaire Gallery to show you how easy it can be with our handy Thanksgiving countdown. This simple plan is sure to save you loads of time in the kitchen and make dinner even more satisfying for you and your guests. The biggest secret to success when making an epic meal is not to cram all of the work into a single day. The best home cooks know that there are lots of things that can be prepped a day in advance. First up, chopping. And for me, that means everything. I like to chop my onions and my celery for my stuffing and store them in the refrigerator. I also like to chop all of my bread and leave it on a baking sheet in the oven overnight. The oven doesn't have to be on, it's just a nice dry place and saves some counter space, which is a total bonus. I also like to get a head start by peeling and chopping my potatoes for my mashed potatoes, but it's important to note that once they're cut, you'll wanna keep them submerged in water to prevent premature browning. Finally, I like to trim and chop all of my veggies like green beans and Brussels sprouts so they're ready to prepare the next day. Now, if you wanna look like a total kitchen superstar without a ton of effort, go ahead and make your own cranberry sauce from scratch. It's actually a lot easier than you might think. All you need is a saucepan on the stove, and to that you can add some cranberries, a little sprinkle of sugar, some orange zest and juice, and then just let it simmer away. Once it's thickened, you can simply cool it and refrigerate it overnight. I also like to prepare my sweet potato casserole ahead of time because it reheats beautifully the next day. And if you're feeling ambitious and plan to make homemade desserts like pies and tarts, it's best to tackle these the day before. I like serving things like pecan or pumpkin pie, which are both delicious the next day, and they happen to be total crowd pleasers. Another great way to get ahead of the game is to set your table the day before. I like to put out all of my place settings and my serving dishes. I even add a sticky note to each serving dish so I know which food is going where. Now it's time to talk about the big day. I like to get started by making my stuffing. Because we did all of our prep the day before, it actually comes together in a flash. I am not a huge fan of stuffing my turkey, so I like to just spoon it into a casserole dish, cover and refrigerate it until it's ready to be reheated. Next, it's time to prepare the turkey. Arrange it in your roasting pan on a bed of veggies to get extra flavor. I like to season my turkey really simply with just some salt and pepper, and then I cover it in a cheesecloth soaked with butter to make the skin extra yummy. Come noon, it's time to get that bird roasting, so you'll want to preheat your oven. If you have a convection setting, be sure to use it. Convection circulates hot air around your turkey so it cooks more quickly and more evenly. Keep in mind that cooking times will vary based on the size of your turkey and the temperature of your oven. A meat thermometer or temperature probe is the only surefire way to know a turkey is cooked properly. By one o'clock, it is time to baste that turkey and then take a break. No, seriously though, the hard work is coming, so use this hour to your advantage. Eat a snack, watch some football, put on your mascara, because soon enough, break time is over and it's time to baste that turkey again. This is also a great time to get our Brussels sprouts going. You could get really fancy with seasonings here, but I like to do mine very simply with a drizzle of olive oil and some salt and pepper. Then I use my second oven rack to roast them up with my turkey. When they're nice and golden, you can remove them from the oven, toss them with a little balsamic vinegar, and then transfer them into an oven safe dish covered in foil. Once your sprouts are set, you'll probably have a few extra minutes, and this is the perfect time to whip up some homemade whipped cream to serve with dessert. At 3.30, you can place your sweet potato casserole and your stuffing, still covered with foil, into the oven to reheat. Then it's time to boil your potatoes. Now I'm using an induction cooktop, which actually boils water in under two minutes. A pretty handy feature when you're doing this much cooking. By 4 p.m., things are getting busy. It's time to get your bird out of the oven to rest for 20 minutes, and in that time, you'll need to mash your potatoes and snag all those tasty pan drippings to make your homemade gravy. You can also pop your cranberry sauce covered in foil into the oven to reheat. I like to use my keep warm setting to make sure everything stays warm for dinner. Hang on, guys, we are in the home stretch. 
At this point, you can transfer all of your hot dishes to the table for serving and transfer that delicious homemade gravy to the gravy boat. I also like to turn the heat off of my oven and put my pie inside to get it heated through in time for dessert. Dinner time has finally arrived. Sit down, relax, and enjoy your meal with a nice glass of wine. You have outdone yourself. You can leave the dishes to someone else. I really hope you guys find this plan helpful for your own holiday entertaining. And if you are cooking up an incredible Thanksgiving feast, be sure to share it, tweet me, Instagram me, or Snapchat me a photo because I love seeing your kitchen creations. Don't forget that all of these delicious recipes are available in this playlist, so keep on watching for those. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from. Happy Thanksgiving!